You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Friday, 2nd of May, 2014. Two football fans in court over tearing up of Koran at Blues match. NHS recruiting 50 doctors from India over Skype to plug desperate A&E shortages. British woman's belly button explodes on plane. Establishment in shock as two Greek generals announce they will run for MEP on the Golden Dawn ticket. No mosques or EU flags for France's National Front mayors get down to business. 150 migrants cross into Malila in the latest mass border jump. Abu Hamza trial. American follower tells terror trial about U.S. jihad training camp. War to segregate male and female students in Libya. Turkey's PM Erdogan planning prayers with Islamic leaders in Hagia Sophia. Thought for the day, naughty words. And finally, two for one Friday. UK News. Two football fans in court over tearing up of Koran at Blues match. Two women have gone on trial after denying committing religiously aggravated harassment by tearing up a copy of the Koran during a Birmingham City match at St Andrews. Middlesbrough FC fans Julie Phillips 50 and Gemma Park in 18 both say they ripped pages from a book but denied knowing it was the Koran last December. The court was told that it was during the second half of the match that Stewart saw a book being handed around the away fans and being ripped up. After inquiries, it emerged the book was the Koran. Parkin of Kimberley Drive, Middlesbrough and Phillips of Kenmore Road, Middlesbrough were among Borough fans pointed out to police. They were appearing at Birmingham Magistrates Court yesterday, each facing a, a charge of religiously aggravated harassment, which they deny. Giving evidence, match steward Matthew Corns told the court he heard chants about Muslims and the Koran as the book was passed around and torn up on December the 7th. World date, so... It just balances out the behead non-Muslims placards they walk around with, doesn't it? Get real. Only sheep would ignore what is going on and not retaliate in some way. This is still a non-Muslim country, even though we're overrun with the bastards. NHS recruiting 50 doctors from India over Skype to plug desperate A&E shortages. The NHS is recruiting 50 doctors directly from India in a bid to fill desperate staffing gaps in Britain's A&E departments. Around 150 candidates, some of whom have not yet taken final exams in emergency medicine, will be interviewed in New Delhi over Skype next week and begin a four-year spell, spell in Britain this summer. Health bosses insist the drastic measure, which will cost the NHS £3,120 per doctor in flights, visas, registration and access to training tools, is the only way to keep emergency wards safely staffed. World at eight. Don't understand it when we're turning away white British doctors at a rate of knots. Rather like the nursing situation, isn't it? Don't want British nurses because we can get Filipino ones cheaper, train them up so they go to the US and earn more money, brigade of brain-dead NHS chiefs. British woman's belly button explodes on plane. No, she is not Pakistani and she was not a suicide bomber. A Yorkshire woman's belly button exploded on a plane after a botched tummy tuck operation, according to a report. Patricia Jackson of Bridlington was given £22,000 in compensation over the incident. She'd lost weight and underwent the operation to remove excess skin. The surgeon told her that her belly button was removed and there was too little skin left over to make a new one. However, five years after the operation, when she was flying home after a trip to Portugal, she discovered it had been sewn up inside her and had been gradually coming apart. Her stomach burst during the flight and she was taken to hospital after it landed, the Metro newspaper reported. The surgeon settled the case out of court three years after the incident. He declined to comment on the case. World date. Yuck. <laughs> European News. Establishment in shock as two Greek generals announced they will run for MEP on the Golden Dawn ticket. Unlike the slacker politicos, TV and football figures running, around, running for the kleptocratic parties, the finest Greeks of our day are participating in Golden Dawn's national struggle. Official statement from Golden Dawn concerning their 42-member candidate list. Now, Golden Dawn has announced its list of 42 candidates for May 2016. Second, 25th EU elections. The list has hit the establishment like a bomb. Two of the candidates are retired Lieutenant Generals. 
Gorgios Epitidios is a retired Lieutenant General who has served as a member of senior staff at the Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe, SHAPE, the Central Command of NATO Military Forces. He has also served on NATO's International Military Staff, IMS, and as Director of the Department of Crisis Response and Current Operations of the European Union Military Staff, EUMS, EUMS. Eleftherios Sinodinos, Sinodinos is a retired Lieutenant General and once commanded the Greek Special Forces. The Greek General, Epitidias, has made the following declaration. Our country is facing the greatest risk to its existence since it became an independent state. The elements that make up the concept of nation and state are being attacked by enemies using all available means. Sovereignty has been surrendered. surrendered. Religion, history, education, health, economy, justice, national defence and security and our cultural heritage are being destroyed. The constitution and individual liberties are being flagrantly violated. The leader, MPs and officers of a legally elected political party have been arrested and are being detained illegally. The population is being impoverished financially, much of our youth has emigrated and thousands of desperate compatriots have been driven to suicide. World at eight, we need those generals here, instead of our milk-fed cowards who have to toady to the establishment for funding and arms. No mosques or EU flags. France's National Front mayors get down to business. The 11 National Front mayors elected in France's recent municipal elections have begun implementing controversial policies, including rejecting projects for new mosques and cancelling commemorations of the abolition of slavery. In the southwest city of Béziers, Robert Menard has established a curfew for minors under 13 who will need to be accompanied by an adult if they wish to be out from 11pm to 6am during the weekends and school holidays of the summer months, June the 15th, September the 15th. In the northern city of Villa Cotteret, meanwhile, one of Frank Briffo's first decisions was to cancel a planned commemoration of the abolition of slavery on May the 10th. In northern France, in the city of Henny beaumont the administration of newly elected Mayor Steve Weir cut a €300 Euro annual subsidy for the Human Rights League, a French NGO dedicated to the defence of civil rights throughout France. Weir has also declared that the group will no longer be able to occupy their local headquarters rent-free, as was the case before. The association's branch in Mont-la-Ville and north-central France may also see a reduction in municipal subsidies. The town's mayor, Cyril Nauth, has also opposed the construction of a new prayer room for Muslims, which had been planned last autumn by the formerly socialist mayor. The new mayor of the southern city of Fréjus, David Racheline, also opposed plans to build a new mosque when he was campaigning and has promised a referendum on the matter. World at eight. Love these guys. Love them. Mucho cojones. Hmm. 150 migrants cross into Malila in latest mass border jump. Around 150 African migrants managed to clear the fence, separating Moroccan territory from the Spanish enclave of Malila early Thursday morning. Around 400 people, divided into two groups, made a coordinated run on the six-metre-high chain-link fence, which is topped with concertina wire at around 6am. Of these, half made it into the narrow space between the two strips of fence that make up the border. The hugs and cries of Bosa, Bosa, victory, victory, of migrants reaching the CETI have become familiar sites in Malila and Spain's other North African enclave of Ceuta, which are the targets of thousands of sub-Saharans trying to reach Europe. The number of people attempting to get across from Morocco has grown significantly this year. World at eight. Give an inch and these economic migrants will take a mile and a country. I could say what should be done, but would end up in prison probably. Truth hurts. Our chairman, Nick Griffin, MEP, will not be reporting today, as he is on the EU campaign trail. Good luck, Nick, and have a lovely bank holiday for you and your family. World News. Abu Hamza trial. American follower tells terror trial about US jihad training camp. A key American aide of hate preacher Abu Hamza suggested setting up a terrorist training camp in the United States so British Muslims could learn to fire guns and practice warfare tactics.
Shooting is illegal in the UK, and I thought they could go then from America to Afghanistan, James Ujama told the New York Terror trial of the one-eyed cleric. I told Sheikh Abu Hamza about this because we talked about this before. Ujama drove nine hours from his home in Seattle to Tiny Bly, Oregon, to check out a potential camp, where he said the arid mountainous terrain was similar to parts of Afghanistan. Asked by the prosecution about Hamza's views on religious warfare, Ujama said his views on physical jihad training was that it was obligatory, every Muslim should engage in it. Hamza, who was extradited from Britain in 2012, has pleaded not guilty to 11 terrorism charges and faces life in jail if convicted. The trial continues. World well, date. Practically every UK Muslim is doing just that. Wall to segregate male and female students in Libya. Under Libya's monarchy and Muammar Gaddafi's regime, schools and universities in Libya had always been co-ed. However, in Derna, located in eastern Libya, male and female students are about to be separated for the first time. A local militia is building a wall in the middle of the university campus in order to segregate them. The wall will be finished in two weeks and then classes will resume at Omar al Mokhtar University in Derna. The construction of this wall is a result of an agreement between the university administration and a local Islamist militia known as Buzlin, which will provide security inside the school. World at eight. What the Muslim world hasn't yet grasped is the attraction of forbidden fruit, or perhaps it has. Turkey's Prime Minister Erdogan planning prayers with Islamic leaders in Hagia Sophia. Rapidly re-Islamizing Turkey has already converted two churches back into mosques. They were converted to mosques at the time of the Jihad conquest of the Byzantine Empire and then made museums by the secular Turkish government. The same thing happened to the Hagia Sophia of Constantinople, once the foremost and grandest church in the entire Christian world. Its reconversion to use as a mosque would be the crowning hallmark of Turkey's re-Islamization and re ottomization World date should appeal to Merkel, though, as they've always favoured the Turks. Perhaps even this worm will turn once in the EU. Thought for the day, naughty words. We have not only just entered the world of naughty words and the naughty step or naughty corner, but have been living in it for the last 50 years. Previously, this sort of ticking off was reserved for children and criminals, but now it has extended its stupidity to all the media at our disposal. Poor old Jeremy. He's been classed as a racist along with Farage. And of course, the reasons for vilifications behind both of them are as different as the real truth is. Jeremy's is because, to the Marxist liberals, he speaks well and doesn't mince his words. So that alone makes him the enemy of the people, and certainly not the nignogs who don't listen to his programme or care even less. Like the elderly and historically white alleged sexual predators whose victims are collecting their pensions now, Clarkson is a dream on a plate just before an election. I'm going to read a letter which was sent to a paper by Edward, who has always been an activist by writing. Dear Sir, I'm just pig sick of living in a country that is becoming more like North Korea every day. The latest Jeremy Clarkson triviality is a fine example of this. Mr Clarkson is heard reciting a child's chant and his only crime, deliberately avoiding a particular word beginning with N, in apparent mockery of the political correctness brigade. I am not a Jeremy's number one fan, due to the fact that everybody co-hosting the BBC Top Gear programme ends up talking like him. It could be something viral or simply pure chance that two other presenters happen to have adopted the same mannerisms of speech, but that's their business. As a British citizen, Jeremy Clarkson, or anybody for that matter, should be able to exercise their right to freedom of speech. It just beggars belief that the ironic fact is, in a lot of cases, the N-word is used more by those to whom it refers as a term of endearment between them than the self-righteous snobs who pretend to be offended by it in order to make themselves look whiter than white. I'm just sick of this pseudo-victim culture that is being opposed upon, imposed upon us. I don't want to live in a society where I'm forever walking on eggshells with everything I say, think and do. With the right to be offended comes the right to offend. You can't have it only one way. That is fascism, and the other irony happens to be that the biggest fascists of all are the anti-fascists themselves. I find this group of people the most deplorable, repulsive and offensive of all. 
Take, for example, the word black when referring to a person with dark skin. Why has the phrase non-white now been adopted? I feel that using the lack of melanin in my skin as a negative term to describe somebody else's complexion, most derogatory and offensive. Yet somehow we have to tolerate it. If I want to use a word, I feel that I have the freedom to use that word and end up in a ridiculous situation where I'm having to refer to the first letter of each word. Because if we end up going down that road, we will all end up talking in code. Which was, incidentally, what won the last World War. Maybe the tables will turn full circle and the enemy within will be exposed for the true hypocrites they really are. Maybe Jeremy Clarkson's critics should emigrate to North Korea, where to be offended will land them and their families in labour camps for the rest of their lives. You can't have up without down, this without that, black without white, it's all about contrast. Your word, Y word, S word, Mr E word and C word. So I'm going to say nigger, nignog, nig and nigger, all the same sentence. There. Who have I offended? Plenty, I hope. You must wonder why, since the last war, this particular word of description of a person's colour and colours of the chart, remember nigger brown, has been vilified and verboten. Haven't a clue, other than our multicultural Marxists have run out of words that they can pick on and punish by public opinion, or perhaps it comes from the diversity rid US, I don't know, and moreover, I couldn't care less. Suffice to say, the derivative of the word nigger in the old dictionaries, before reprinting, was describing a person from around the area of the river Niger. Now it describes it as a word derived from the Spanish negra, which means black or dark. They have Nigeria in Africa, and if you notice, when the broadcasters mention Niger, they pronounce it Niger instead of Niger. All this is laughable, and let's call a spade a spade. Nignogs can get away with calling a white person a honky and worse on the TV and public without fear of being carted away. Black is black. Get on with it. Pakis is short for Pakistanis and they use it themselves to each other. Brits is short for British. Scots is short for Scottish. Paddy is for the Irish who aren't really offended unless you call them Kerryman, which is Irish for nigger. Taffy is for the Welsh or Leakies or Daffies. Get over it. Krauts is for Germans and so on. If the blacks, West Indians or Africans don't want to be identified, then either don't come over here or adjust. If you're black, you're different from us and we are different to you. Everyone is identified by the colour of their skin, by whatever name. You can call a guy a gent and still make it sound like an insult. If the cap fits, wear it. Farage's racism just extends to EU immigrants and he happily still encourages multitudes of Indians, Arabs and Chinese onto these shores, but is still being built up in the media as being racist. Well, if he's a racist, then Pol Pot was Saint Teresa. But it looks good for the gutless amongst us with a protest vote and no balls to vote for the BNP, who are against all immigration into the UK. So I will continue to offend and re-offend with naughty words. Try laughing at them and that works. We also have truly offensive word, which, words which the media apply to us Brits. Lazy, uneducated, old, senile, poor, drunk, druggies, grannies, pensioners, public school, loners, neo-Nazis, members of right-wing parties, Islamophobes, troublemakers and many more, which we have to take on board and absorb. So perhaps it is the turn of the white centre right whatevers to have their say. Get over it and get a life. And finally, two for one day Friday. Two jokes to offend the Irish and the Kerryman. A married Irishman went into the confessional and said to his priest, I almost had an affair with another woman. The priest said, what do you mean almost? The Irishman said, well, we got undressed and rubbed together, but then I stopped. The priest said, rubbing together is the same as putting it in. You're not to see that woman again. For your penance, say five Hail Marys and put 50 euros in the poor box. The Irishman left the confessional, said his prayers, and then walked over to the poor box. He paused for a moment and then started to leave. The priest who was watching quickly rang over to him, saying, I saw that you didn't put any money in the poor box. The Irishman replied, yeah, but I rubbed the 50 euros on the box and according to you, that's the same as putting it in. And lemon squeeze. There was once a religious young woman who went to confession. 
Upon entering the confessional, she said, Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. The priest said, Confess your sins and be forgiven. The young woman said, Last night my boyfriend made mad passionate love to me seven times. The priest thought long and hard and then said, Squeeze seven lemons into a glass and then drink the juice. The young woman asked, Will this cleanse me of my sins? The priest said, No, but it'll wipe the smile off your face. You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart, and I and the team at World at Eight and Radio Britain wish you all a very happy and safe bank holiday weekend.